Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this lesson, I'm gonna talk about non-chord tones. I'm big on chord tones, uh, understanding what notes are in chords, using them to improvise with, using them to compose with, having that really down on the fretboard. I'll link to uh, my series about chord tone improvisation. It's really critical. Next level of our musicianship knowledge, theory knowledge, and application after really understanding chord tones, the importance of them, how to play with them, how to use them for what we want for our goals, is to understand non-chord tones and how to use them in different ways. In this lesson, I think it'll be nice to walk through the official terminologies for non-chord tones in classical music theory analysis or classical composition classes. They're talking about non-chord tones with specific names. And then I'm gonna give you musical examples, show you sheet music of it, and we'll walk through looking at what notes are the non-chord tones. And it's really cool to look at, not just because there's specific types of non-chord tones to analyze and know the names of, which isn't that important, but so we can see how important the chord tones are lining up with the chords and how few notes, sometimes at least, are actually non-chord tones and how uh, a couple very well-known songs and melodies you're gonna get exposed to here. This lesson actually is an exact lesson that I have taught inside my beginner guitar course. And I've been teaching, slowly teaching and working through um, delivering that course right now as of when I'm filming this video. And I wanted to reteach this lesson uh, for my YouTube channel, kind of not as a little sample, not as a teaser for my course or anything, but just because it's really valuable to know about and it's, it's fun to talk about. So I'm just gonna use the same slides from my course here and go through it with you. The first thing I wanna show you here is just a little chart of the non-chord tone types, the non-chord tone terminologies. Then we're we're going to look at actual musical examples and that's where it's really going to be valuable i think um the main takeaway here might be that you know a couple of these in the end passing tone neighbor tone and maybe not some of the others and that's okay the big thing here is to try to understand in the end when you're playing whether it's composing improvising analyzing songs learning songs what notes are non-chord tones and how are they being used, where in time are they being used, on what beat, where are they moving to, coming from. All of these things have official names in classical music theory. So we're learning about them here, but in the end, just know the power of how non-chord tones are used can add character and uh, the feel to an entire melody. So we'll get to the musical examples in a second. Let's go through this chart though. A passing tone is a chord tone that moves. This is the from movement to movement. So it's going to move from a chord tone by step and then into another chord tone, the same direction by step. Pretty straightforward. Here's the key of uh, the C chord. This is one, this is five, this is three. Tiny bit out of tune, that's okay. This is three, here's four, three and four next to each other on a major scale, three, four, five. Okay, well that's, considered a not a good note on the C major chord. People even call it the avoid note, but no, it's not an avoid note. You can use it as a passing tone or a non-chord tone in a specific way. It's maybe an avoid note. Let's play a B major. I'll play B major seven, and then I'll play the four. That's why people call it an avoid note. And you could, if you like the sound, do whatever you want, but. There's the four right there. It's not bad sounding at all if you're using it as a non-chord tone in uh, maybe a more traditional compositional sense, such as as a passing tone. Three, four, five, five, four, three, passing tone. Pretty straightforward. It's probably the most common uh, type of non-chord tone that people know about. Neighbor tone is that you move away from a chord tone by step and you go back to a chord tone also by step. It says step in the opposite direction. So you're just not going that same direction again. Okay, so. You got three, four, three, there it is. Neighbor tone, da, da, da. Chord tone, non-chord tone, back. Here's five of C, five, six, five, chord tone, non-chord tone, back. Here's one of C, one, two, one, chord tone, non-chord tone, back, okay? And chords can be changing also when you do this. Um, and we'll do a changing chord example. It doesn't have to all be on the same chord, obviously. An appoggiatura is a leap from a chord tone and then moving by step into the next chord tone. Let's say we are on the three of C. <laughs> There's the three, same note as we were doing here. Then you leap away an accented appoggiatura or a regular appoggiatura. Either way, you leap and then you move by step into the chord tone. Leap by step, okay? In any case, non-chord tone being used in a very specific way and fancy terminology for uh, how to label it if you like. An escape tone is going away, uh, leaping away, 
Oh, I'm sorry, going away by a step and then leaping back to the uh, chord tone. So it's the opposite of an appoggiatura, right? You don't have to remember all these. We're gonna look at real music in, in one second. Um, so you're going away by step and then you are leaping back, okay? So we might do um, da, da, da. Here's C, here's our E, here's our non chord we've been using, and then la. And if the chord changes, that's how I'm doing this. Chord tone, step up, leap down. Escape tone, it went up, but then back down. And I just changed chords, that's the five of G, okay? If you care about all these names, sharing them with you here. If you don't, you're gonna see uh, our next step here will be very valuable. Anticipation note is really common that you probably know of. It sounds very classical. It's where you go to by step to the chord tone early. Anticipation note. So you might go, here's D, one, three, five. This is five of D. And then duh, that's not in D. Duh. Go to it early and then change chords. Duh, duh, duh. Anticipation. Okay, non-chord tone as an anticipation. Suspension is very commonly, uh, a, a suspended chord is something that a lot of guitarists know about because of the famous D sus4 shape that we often learn early as guitar playing, as chord playing guitarists. Okay, here's a normal D, raise that top note up a half step, D sus or D sus4. Well, this is cool to learn about that a suspension is actually a thing happening in time and motion. The original version of a suspen suspension is that you are staying on the same note and then moving. And it gets this beautiful kind of harmonic sound that's not just necessarily a static chord shape. Nowadays, it's perfectly fine to have it be a static chord shape, but originally a suspension was something that was happening in time uh, through harmony as a non-chord tone. So here's an example. If I'm playing C major, here's, here's C, the root, uh, and then this right here is G sus4. This is the five of G, this is the root of G, this is the four. Okay, so I might go C, G sus4, and then resolve. Okay, so it stays on the same note and then moves by step. And even bonus points if you don't replay the note and let it ring. Ah, it's hard to do. I did replay it. But sustaining that note like in a choir where someone's actually continuing to sing the note and then moving down late, resolving by step late, is a suspended sound. Very beautiful. Um, and works perfectly fine if you replay the note like I did as well. Um, and then retardation is just a flip of a susp suspension. You're playing the same note and you're moving up by step instead of down by step. So we just did, um, I just think of this as a suspension still, but um, you move the other direction. That's retardation instead of suspension. One is holding and then going down. One is holding and then going up. Here's a great example of this one. A major, top note is E, that's in the chord. And you might play D sus2. That would be the name of this shape. But then move it to the normal D, so. Ah, lovely. That's officially called retardation, but it's a flipped backwards suspension, just like an appoggiatura is a backwards escape tone. Okay, enough academic labels. Kind of cool to know about them though. Let's actually look at some examples of songs melodies. This is over the rainbow. And what I've highlighted here with the red is the non-chord tones. Look how few there are. Look how few non-chord tones there are in over the rainbow. Um, and what an involved melody. And it's a ballad, so you can move chords around more. But, you know, chord tone, chord tone, chord tone, chord tone, passing tone, chord tone, chord tone. Cool. Chord tone of D minor, chord tone of G7, chord tone of C, da, da, da. Okay, and you can see the passing tone just happening. Chord tone, passing tone, chord tone. Yeah, the chord changes, but still passing tones happen that way. Passing tone here. And then what is this? Little quiz moment, what is that one? It's an escape tone. It goes up and then it leaps back down. Okay, so we're on G7, it goes da, 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 da. Da, de, da. Okay, kind of cool to see it in real life, right? And just how um, 
such an iconic melody and it's not full with anything crazy. It's chord tones all over the place and the harmony following it and then just a little bit of these non-chord tones. Not that every, not that all music works this way, it's just a cool example. Here we are, Can't Help Falling In Love. Same deal, only three non-chord tones, what? Chord tone of E minor. Okay, what is that? Passing tone, chord tone, non-chord tone, chord tone, passing tone, right? Chord tone, chord tone, chord tone, all chord tones, passing tone. This is a passing tone and it's not on our list, but a passing tone can be an accented passing tone and that's what this is. Very cool. So we got It's not a chord tone of G, but it is chord tone from here, non chord tone, chord tone. It's accented because it's when the chord changes on the beat. But it's still just a passing tone, but it's an accented passing tone. There's also something called a double passing tone, which we get to see next. But pretty cool, right? And just nice to have this here. Chord tone. Da, 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 da. So many chord tones making these iconic melodies. Here's Ode to Joy. And now we have a double passing tone. More passing tones here. Double passing tone, double passing tone. Um, here is suspension. Um, here is a suspension. Okay, obviously a passing tone, so. That's staying on the same note and then resolving down, suspension, right? Here we are on the C chord, second line. Suspension, oh no, not suspension. Uh, da, 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 da. Not suspension, what is this gonna be? What is this here? Anticipation. It's that anticipation thing. So. Not showing you my hands because I'm looking at the slides with you, but, uh, and I want you to hear while I'm kind of pointing to things and just showing, we don't need to have this perfectly memorized. You can, you can go towards that and it's more academic, more, uh, officially like a classical theory book would have all of this or a composition uh, class would go through all of this. But the most core kind of simple takeaway is that non-chord tones are important and they can be treated in different ways to get different feelings. And in our own playing, we wanna know chord tones so well so we can get to painting with, using the color of, using the effect of non-chord tones in really intentional ways, and just having an awareness of where they are. It's gonna help you learn songs faster, remember them longer, come up with stuff you like faster if you're being creative, improvise better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like always, just our playground of showing up and spending time with a guitar, trying to get better at it, and having fun with the journey. Um, so that is the lesson on non-chord tones. Let me know what you thought in the comments if you found that beneficial. If you want a resource to map out chord tones on the guitar, I have a chord tone vocabulary pack. Uh, all the arpeggios, chord tones, arpeggios, same thing, interchangeable, of 12 different chord types. So it's all the chord tones that I mapped out for myself on 12 different chord types to be able to improvise with chord tones over any progression anywhere on the guitar, including any crazy jazz progression. So even just a few of those, even just some of the triads, if you want the, the visuals in front of you with a PDF to just work on and map out, you can get that, it's totally for free. There's a link to download it in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones and you can get it there. I post a new lesson video every week. Hope to see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.